Hi, this is Bob Dema with Obedia, and today we'll be looking at how to get your mix out of Pro Tools so that we can burn it to a CD or put it on our MP3 player. Let's start by opening our Pro Tools session and zooming out to a point where we can see our whole session. You can use the uh, zoom tool up here. Next, you'll need to select the duration or area of the bounce. Uh, by the way, bouncing is what Pro Tools refers to exporting or rendering our mix to an audio file. Using the selector tool, which I'm clicking on here, click and drag from the start to the end of the portion you wish to bounce out. Now it doesn't matter what tracks you happen to be selecting, it's only the duration that matters. If you're more comfortable working with the timeline up above, you can select the duration up here as well. And now that we've made our selection, from the file menu, go to Bounce to Disk. A dialog will pop up with some settings that we need to verify first. So from the top to the bottom, let's take a look. File type, we should set that to Wave. The format needs to be stereo interleaved. This is important, otherwise you'll wind up with two files that represent the left and the right side of the audio. So set this to interleaved. The resolution needs to be switched to 16-bit in order to support audio CDs and MP3s. You will probably encounter problems if you try to convert a 24-bit file to an MP3. Next we have the uh, conversion quality. And this will only come up if you're working at anything other than 44.1. Be sure to set the sample rate to 44.1 so that uh, you have a file that's compatible with the uh, audio CD standard. If we're moving from one sample rate to the other, set the conversion quality to tweakhead. That's the highest quality setting. Lastly, the convert after bounce is the default option here, and that's fine. Don't worry about changing that. Okay, so click the bounce button. And now we're ready to give the file a name and set the location. Now Pro Tools defaults the location to the audio files folder of the session folder. Now I personally find this more confusing because it can be a hassle to dig for the bounced files if you have a lot of audio in your audio files folder. So what I recommend is creating a new folder in your session folder and call it bounces. So if you just move back a step to the session folder here. Create a new folder called Bounces. Now click Save and you should hear your session begin to play. Bounces happen in real time and uh, this is a good time to sit back and listen through to the mix and make sure it all sounds good. Okay, so now that our file is finished bouncing out, uh, we're ready to burn it to CD or convert it to an MP3. Today I'll be using iTunes to burn our CDs. It's easy to use and it's supported on both the Mac and the Windows platforms. So let's open up iTunes. And the first thing we'll need to take a look at in iTunes are some of the preferences. If you're on a Mac, the preferences are found under the iTunes menu. Start out by going to the Advanced tab and clicking on the Importing button. Let's make sure that we have the Import using MP3 encoder selected. And I like to have the settings at high quality. Next, click the Burning button and be sure that the disk format is set to Audio CD. Once you've done that, we're done with the pref, so click OK to close the dialog. I'd like to take a second to suggest a few changes to the columns we view. From the View menu, select the View Options. And let's be sure that we check the boxes for Kind and Date Added. All right, now that we've done that, click OK to close the dialog. Now we're going to bring our audio file into our music library. So start by going to the File menu and select Add to Library. Locate your bounced file, which should be in the bounces folder that we made uh, of the session folder. So I'm navigating to the file, selecting it, hit choose. Next, let's create a new playlist. 
playlists are the only way that you can burn an audio file to CD. So click the plus sign and name the playlist. Hit return. Now from your music library, click here and drag and drop the file to your new playlist. And when you click on the playlist, you'll see in the lower right the Burn Audio to CD button. When you click on that, iTunes will ask you for a blank CD, and you should be good to go. Now currently, the file you've imported is a WAV file. You could put that on your MP3 player, but it would take up a lot of space. So to convert it to an MP3, go to your music library, select the file, and from the advanced menu, select Convert Selection to MP3. After iTunes is done converting the file to an MP3, you'll notice that you've now got two of the same file. Well, which is which? Remember when we added the additional views? We can take a look at the kind column to see which is a WAV file and which is the MP3. If you have a lot of songs in iTunes, you can sort by date added and the most recent files will float to the top. I hope you found this movie helpful. Be sure to check back at obedia.com for more tutorials, help, and information.